Hello and welcome. My name is Beatrice and I'm a Senior Analyst for Jane's Aviation Desk. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. Today, John Sneller, Head of Aviation Desk, Mark Bobby, Principal Analyst for Commercial Platforms, Ben Moore, Senior Analyst for Military Platforms, and Charles Halosi, Senior Analyst for Military Platforms, will present a session entitled Fifth Generation versus Fourth Generation, Technology Meets Platform Maturity in a Competing Fighter Market. Jane's Intelligence Briefing Program will consist of approximately 40 events during 2017 and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and Mojo products, including the market forecast products. I would like to highlight that the information used to compile today's presentation has been drawn from a variety of Jane's content, but particularly from Jane's defense industry market. Now, there's no universally accepted definition between these different fighters, so what I've done is I've prepared a slide here which gives the general uh, uh, outline of the, of the different generations sort of down the ages. So if I, if I call this a Jane's classification, as much as anything else, then it will give you the idea about uh, where, where uh, aeroplanes have come from. And of course, it's mainly about improving and increasing technology down the years. So the core developments in fifth and sixth generation platforms are really around real sensor fusion presented clearly to the pilot when receiving a very large amount of information, super cruise, which effectively is supersonic flight without reheat, thus in increasing the stealth of the aircraft. High maneuverability, often helped by thrust vectoring from the engines. Low observable structure and materials to make the aircraft low in terms of observability and stealth. And finally, a, an ACER type of radar, which can scan targets at the same time as acquiring targets. Uh, from the same radar. Looking uh, more closely, you can see from this slide that we are currently in an overlapping period between fourth and, and fifth gen aircraft as, uh, uh, as we sit today. So F-16 and F-15 production is drawing slowly to a close, while most other fourth gen uh, platforms are mature with many requiring service life extension programs or midlife mission system updates, mainly to overcome things like obsolescence of software. Meanwhile, global R&D activity is working towards various national and collaborative fifth generation programs, which I've shown down the right hand side here. I've got two examples for you uh, from a fifth generation uh, before we, we contrast uh, this type of technology in these platforms with the fourth generation. So the F-35 here was conceived uh, as the common affordable lightweight fighter originally and as a stealthy replacement for a variety of platforms. Now cost has repeatedly been an area of concern uh, for both the manufacturer and for customers. However, Blueprint for Affordability aims to deliver the F-35A minus the engine for around about 80 million US dollars by 2019. The other major program which is uh, 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 of fifth gen nature is the recently named SU-57, which is currently paused between a block one standard where 12 uh, such examples were built and block two, which we're currently estimating uh, coming into production in 2000. And 22. Key issues with this program uh, are overweight, the current engine's capability in relation to a fifth gen uh, a standard, if you like, the level of Indianization or modifications that the Indian DOD wants to put into the aircraft, and the level of technology transfer that the Russians would wish to share with the Indians, uh, which obviously challenges the, the relationship on the program. Uh, like Super Hornet, the Typhoon, wonderful airplane, was supposed to be out of production by 2020, but remains in production, thanks primarily to uh, external orders, international orders, and most recently by Qatar, or Qatar for 24 aircraft, likely delivering 2020 and beyond. Additional exports, however, are unlikely as competitor unit price, particularly the F-35 falls 
with increasing production. Uh, beyond Typhoon, uh, Europe is beginning to look at what will replace it and France's Rafale. Germany and France are discussing uh, potential collaboration on a follow-on to uh, Eurofighter and Rafale and a potential companion to uh, F-35 for countries that are using that. However, the UK's exit from the EU does, however, put its, part, put its participation in any next generation manned aircraft in question, thus leaving British aerospace and UK industry uh, to, to extend or potentially extend its role on F-35 and any airplane that follows in the U.S. arsenal. I'm going to be looking at the global market for fighter aircraft by contract status, uh, region, opportunities, and platform family. Now, please note that I will be examining the market by unit numbers, and thus the price and probability of these contracts occurring is not factored into the chart. Um, now, all of this data is taken from the, uh, the bottom-up market forecast database here at Chains. So, first of all, the chart on the left, you'll see the total global fighter contracts by contract status. Um, first thing to note, just, just over a third of all fighter aircraft to be delivered uh, in the next decade remain uncontracted. I think that's an important takeaway here straight away, and we'll look at that in more depth as we go on. Uh, this amounts to a total of one th over 1,028 aircraft, uh, many of which, uh, nearly, actually nearly all of which, are in countries that will import this aircraft that don't tend to have long, drawn-out delivery schedules. Now, if we look at the chart on the right, the total global fighter contracts by platform family, um, we, 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 can, we can dive in a bit more. So the, the first thing to note is this chart... Um, in this chart is that the unspecified element you're looking at there, the big wedge that grows towards the end, is, accounts for all unawarded contracts. And you can see there just how much that, that grows over time. And when you look at this chart, the, the first thing you're going to really see is the dominance of the F-35. The F-35 already accounts for a third of global aircraft over the next decade. decade. Uh, this map illustrates the extent of fifth generation fighter programs globally and their penetration into various regional markets. Uh, many of these programs are intended for domestic requirements, such as the J-20 in China, the F-3 in Japan, the Sukhoi 57 in Russia, and the TFX in Turkey, and are unlikely to be exported anytime soon. Others, such as the Indian-Russian FGFA and Korean-Indonesian KFX, are bilateral projects, or aircraft likely to find buyers with traditional clients, such as the Chinese J-31. The F-35 has already enjoyed significant sales around the world, with many customers having industrial involvement in the program. However, there are still a number of medium and long-term flight requirements where the aircraft is the preferred platform or will come up against fourth-generation competition. And I'm going to take a look at a few of these around the world. Belgium's program to replace its 54 F-16 AM BMs with 34 new aircraft has been defined by its strategic defence doctrine based on the requirement to have six on permanent standby for operations and two on quick reaction alert duties over Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. Belgium discussed the sole source acquisition of the F-35 with US officials as far back as 2009, and there's long been a suspicion that this remains the favoured platform for the requirement. Given the Netherlands is already committed to acquiring the F-35A, an emphasis on interoperability for the shared defence of sovereign airspace role has served to strengthen this feeling. In the Middle East and North Africa as a whole, a key factor in fighter procurement is the long-standing US policy to maintain Israeli regional qualitative military superiority. This is likely, likely to prevent the sale of the F-35 to Arab states until the middle of the 2020s. In Morocco, replacement of the Mirage F-1 and the Northrop F-5 fleets will become a priority in the 2020s. With the grip and E, or used fourth generation platforms having an advantage if funding becomes an issue. Um, just to conclude some key points, we looked at the F-35, which increased sales uh, beyond the original partners, even uh, despite technical, technical issues and the um, high price, the, high, the expensive platform. Um, we spoke about four and 4.5 generation uh, platforms, which still are an important alternative in terms of maturity of the platform, in terms of pricing, in terms of operations, operational heritage, and also in terms of local development flexibility. Forward to welcoming you to future online briefings. 
Our next online briefing, which is on the U.S. DOD FY18 budget, will be held on Wednesday, 8th of November. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.